I think our members um, get together every month in meetings and talk about issues and opportunities. Yesterday I was in a meeting and they were balancing out the positives of this economy. On the one hand, low employment, high growth with the negatives. Where are we going on tariffs? What's happening with interest rates? And what's going to be going on with the deficit? And when you balance it out, they think that it's kind of choppy waters, getting choppier. But our members are confident they'll power through it. So I wouldn't say it's only half bearish. It's pretty mixed. But things are changing with interest rates rising. Exposure to real estate is coming down a little. Markets are a little frothy there. So members are taking buildings off the table where they've had great investments. Hedge funds slightly up. That's an indicator of rising interest rates. Hedge funds do better and lower fixed income, again, because of higher interest rates. I saw the, the breakdown of, uh, of your club's holdings. You don't own any commodities right now. Almost none. Why? Isn't, aren't we it in has an inflationary an... cycle right now or yeah. the beginning of one? <clears throat> so uh, it may pick up. Even at its peak, we're talking about individual investors, so commodities expertise is limited. But they're also getting it through the stocks that have commodity exposure. They can get it uh, in lots of different ways. So actually owning commodities has never been a high point for entrepreneurs who are learning how to have a balanced portfolio. So this is not a reflection of where you think the market's going. You just generally don't own commodities. Just yeah, I don't think the commodities would too be too volatile a, for your kind of a club. A, a much better reflection would be uh, interest rates public stocks, private equity, those are the things that our members are much more competent in because they've built great businesses. Is a cash allocation of 10% normal or is that high? Actually, it's slightly low. Over the last really? decade, it would have been closer to 12%. So nobody's panicking, even though people are starting to get concerned. They're not heading for the hills. They're actually picking investments. When, when our members get together, we have 50 groups across the globe meeting every month. And when they talk about investments, they're really looking for where can they have an all-weather portfolio. That's the magic. And particularly for entrepreneurs, having a balanced portfolio is really tough because entrepreneurs focused on one thing during their career and learning how to diversify is the process that we drive through our meetings. We've talked broadly about sectors. Let's talk about individual stocks and some of the names that you own. Some big sure. ones that kind of stick out to, to me here, Tesla and Apple, a lot of volatility in that yeah. Tesla stock. What's so going on So let's distinguish between the two. Apple has been our number one holding. Obviously, when Berkshire uh, piled in, uh, Apple is part of all of the fangs. Those are our top five holdings. Tesla is not a top holding, but it's talked about a lot. You know, last year I was in a meeting where one of the top hedge fund managers gave his thesis on a short. It was on Tesla. I shorted Tesla. I don't own it today, full disclosure, but I drove here today in a Tesla that I bought with the profits from the short. Do the entrepreneurs in your meetings, because these are the, in the club, they're entrepreneurs who made their own fortunes, do they identify, do they feel for Elon Musk? Totally, totally. You know, the struggle of an entrepreneur to create a business, Elon Musk is having some problems today, but he's revolutionized space. He's revolutionized uh, automobiles, soon to be trucks, and the boring company. The problem with Tesla is not the car, it's amazing. The stock may be overpriced given the competition that's coming down the pike from Mercedes and other car manufacturers. So you have this difference. Amazing car, maybe the stock is a little overpriced. But this has been the dilemma from day one almost for people deciding whether or not to invest in Tesla. Are you betting on the jockey or on the company itself, right? Yeah. Totally. You may like the car, but is Elon Musk the guy to take him into the future? Yes, but compare it to Bezos and Amazon, Jobs. They you can have, compare him to anybody, but Elon yeah. Musk is a unique individual. Totally. We realize that, right? He, he, but is he the kind of guy who can, is he the adult that can take it forward, or does he need, need an Eric Schmidt like they brought in at yeah. Google? I would argue the issue is not his entrepreneurial chops. It's whether he can build an unassailable moat. It's much harder in the audio industry to do that than Amazon did or Apple did. Those were remarkable achievements. But when you have Mercedes and BMW and the other global car brands out there, no matter how innovative you are, it's going to be hard to have an unassailable moat.